Hi, I just want to welcome you to my Periscope as I just engage in a discussion this morning about learning the language of miracles. And I'm going to share this real quick on my uh, some of my other um, uh, social media platforms. Uh, hopefully I can do that real quick here. Apparently not. Um, let's see here. I, I think I got it. Got it, got it. Okay, now I'm on my Twitter. All right, I'll just give you some time to actually hop in as well as share this with your followers. Um, and then I'll tell you a few things while that is going on. So it's good to see all of you uh, today. Again, make sure you share this with your followers. Um, we'll just take a few moments as people are hopping in. And um, while while you're there, make sure you get this book, Glory Carriers. Um, this this book is, it's not the, the quick um, it's not the quick solution. In other words, you know, if you want to carry the glory of God with signs and wonders following, this is going to require relationship uh, with the Holy Spirit. But this book is going to tell you all about that. Um, but what will happen is you're going to transform because you're learning relationship with the Spirit of God. And then secondly, uh, his super gets on your natural and you start walking in signs and wonders without striving. And I think that's where it needs to be. So we want to bring everything back to relationship. Uh, some of us, we don't know how to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We don't have the first clue we've never even been told we can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit yes you can this is my journey and this is the things that happen as a result of that um, some things I do have coming up um, I will be in Southern California for two back-to-back -back conferences or far enough away from each other um, so they they won't uh, they won't conflict with one another but I'll stop first um, uh, let me make sure I have the exact dates uh, November 7th through 9th is the Greater Glory Conference in um, Orange County and that's with myself, uh, Ben Lim, and Doug Addison. And um, so you can register at Eventbrite for that. And then the second one is at Spirit Life uh, Church, I believe, at, in Apple Valley. And that's going to be the 8th through the 10th. Obviously, I will not be there. I will not be at two places at one time. So I'll start in Orange County and then I'll land in Apple Valley. Uh, at, at I think it's a Rivers in the Desert Conference, uh, Spirit Life Church. So... So anyway, I hope to see you at one or both of those. That would be great in Southern California. And then I do have an online writing, writing um, course. Um, first time I've ever done a writing course, I just uh, heard the Lord speak. He says, do a writing course. I'm like, okay, so so we're gonna do this November 23rd, uh, 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's online. Uh, if you register for it and you miss the live, you can get the replay. So, you know, think about it. Um, but it really is um, a call to prophetic writing. Um, uh, you know that this is uh, this is the next generation of language that needs to come from heaven and be put on the screens, the books, the the blogs, the the social media, the songs. You know those kind of things. And Prophet James Gall, uh, he totally prophesied into that um, at this last institute that we had. That was amazing. I already had it on the calendar and scheduled, but I'd like to see you, see you join in if that's what God's calling you to do, if he's calling you to be a writer. Um, we'll talk about the practical too as well, just practical stuff, is, but it's also very impartational. Um, and so uh, I put the address of that um, course where you can register uh, right in the title line there. And so, um, so I'd like to see you there. And then pushing way forward, we have the Inner Healing and Deliverance Institute here at Harvest Church. March 5th through 7th, myself, Apostle Eckhart, and Katie Souza, and we've already sold like 240 tickets. It's crazy. I, I just don't know what to do with these institutes anymore because we just fill up, and so <laughs> there's an online option, there's an on-campus option while we have seats, and so we're just working through some good good issues these days, you know, just how to how to grow, okay? So that's an event bright. Love to see you there. Um, okay, so let's talk about learning the language of miracles. Now, uh, let me set this up. Uh, you know, I, I really have, you know, come from prophetic camps and we've learned the language of the prophetic, you know, how to prophesy into anything, uh, you know, and everything is prophetic and, you know, it's all good. It's the emphasis of the Lord and that's not going away. Um, you know, if anything, it's just going to grow. And so my, my default was to uh, prophesy to every problem, essentially pray, pray into it, prophetic intercession, prophesy, I'll prophesy your miracle, I'll prophesy your healing, I'll prophesy your breakthrough, I'll prophesy this, that and the other, I'm going to prophesy into it. And uh, nothing wrong with that, and we want to keep that. We're not going to give that up. And a lot of prophetic communities, that's that's their rhetoric, that's their language, that's their that's their default. That's how they handle everything. Okay, the word of the Lord. Um, so you know that's not going away. Um, but I was writing the last chapter of this book, Glory Carries, last chapter, and I studied the different miracles, miracles of glory, and a felt anointing came upon me, um, a presence of the Lord, 
and it was uh, basically the beginning of the gift of working in miracles in my life and I have been after this thing you know ever since it's been like well over a year now and it started with um, the miracle of supernatural weight loss where all of a sudden I just had this anointing for it I just understood it and I understood biblically the keys uh, you know, deliverance for it. And then we're dealing with the spirit of heaviness. And, you know, it's not about vanity. It's about, it's really about being able to run your race and live out your purpose. And people who get caught up in an unhealthy weight where they cannot get the weight off, they can't live out their purpose. It, it's truly trapped them uh, from fulfilling their destiny. And the Lord wanted to release a remedy, um, you know, release a miracle. And I've seen so many people just just um, uh, get set free of this this binding weight that they cannot get off. And so um, start, it started there, but it, it's actually, a, it's a very real tangible anointing, okay? It's a very real anointing and it feels like power. And, and I began to realize that, that this is something new and it started going into other places, you know, supernatural hair growth, um, gold on the teeth, which, I mean, that just floors me that the Lord will put gold on your, your back teeth, your wisdom teeth and mark you. Uh, with wisdom mark you with gold. It's just fascinating to me and and you know these things and the healings and different things But it's really coming out of the realm of the gift of miracles more than the prophetic realms I'm used to prophetic realms pro prophecy Prophesying things and being effective at it. I wasn't used to this and I realized that um, I was having to learn it. It's learning a new language and I wanted to start teaching it and giving it to you because I think it's something that needs to be accessible. I refuse to be the celebrity personality, the TV personality, the miracle person, where I'm the only one who operates in this. I absolutely refuse to do that because it's not what it's about. It's for the body of Christ so that we can, you know, depending on what the Lord is emphasizing, you know, we can bring freedom, freedom to the body of Christ, or we can um, bring a demonstration to those who don't know him, don't know Jesus, so that they will pay attention when we preach the gospel to them. Okay, so, you know, there's some, some different angles that we can we can aim this, but nevertheless, we've got to learn the language of it. Okay, and if you're in, like, very prophetic communities, it, I'm going to tell you something, it's a different language, it's a, it's a different anointing, and you need to recognize it and start flowing with it, because I'm a I'm a prophetic forerunner. If God's doing something in me, that's because he's going to do it in the body of Christ. And so I've always had to step out into something and, and then teach it and equip and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm learning the language, okay? So here's some things that I've learned is that it's, uh, it's, a, it's anointing, but it feels like power totally feels like power you feel when that anointing comes on you you feel superhuman and it's it can be deceptive because you can think in the moment you can think that you know this is really you and it's not it's the holy spirit coming on you supernaturally okay so so let's look at these cluster of supernatural gifts first corinthians 12 there's a cluster of holy spirit gifts and just i'm going to pull out a few just so i can tell you the differences between between them so you will understand for example there's the gift of faith now that's not ordinary faith that's not the fruit of faith, that's supernatural faith. And what's the difference? Well, what happens is where your faith ends, God's faith comes in and he will speak a word out, out of your mouth. It'll be as if God said it. It'll have a supernatural power on it and it'll it'll accomplish whatever is said, all right? And so it's, it's like God is speaking and when he speaks it, there's, there's nothing going to stop it. Okay. So, so that's the gift of faith. And so sometimes you can speak that word for somebody's healing, somebody's, somebody's deliverance. And it's, it's the gift of faith operating and, and it is going to happen and there's nothing going to stop it. Uh, there's absolutely nothing can stop it, but that's a gift of faith and it'll come on you and then it'll lift off of you, which is good because if that was always on you and because we are unsanctified, you know, in a lot of areas, uh, we would basically wreck the planet, you know, <laughs> we just be saying things that we should not say. All right. And so, so anyway, uh, that's the gift of faith. It'll come on you and it'll come off you. Um, and then the gifts of healings, um, for me, it has felt more like, um, like a kind of a river or an oil. That's how I've been able to identify the, the, the kind of anointing that is it's just come upon me and healing uh, is an instant it's gradual but it what will happen is somebody who's been stuck they haven't been able to get healed has been stuck in that that disease all of a sudden that anointing will come and you will lay hands on them you know usually you'll lay hands on that person and you'll 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 command their healing and then what will happen is they will actually uh, start reversing um, course you know they'll actually move into healing and health rather than being stuck in the disease and so that's the gifts the gifts of healings at, you know first Corinthians 12 now the gift of working in miracles that's power power comes on you and you'll feel a power now 
going into this, I don't have an issue. Um, I don't I struggle with anything, but coming out of it is where I notice issues. What are the issues? Well, th it's power, but it's Holy Spirit power. And so if you've got stuff in you that needs to be like worked out or sanctified or something, it'll push it right out of you. It'll come right to the surface. So, so that's the scary part of this, this anointing. So I, here's what I've noticed, you know, hands down, I noticed when I start operating the gift of work of miracles, what will happen is I'll notice I'll get really agitated and angry and things will tick me off and people are not doing what they're supposed to do. I'll just have all sorts of weird, you know, anger thoughts. And you say, what's that about? Is that the anointing? No, it's not the anointing. It's my unsanctified flesh. It's me. It's my anger getting pushed to the surface. I used to watch those videos from those, those miracle guys, and I would get so mad at them because I think they're so rude to their team. They're so rude to their staff. And I would watch them just like flip out on people, and I'm like, my God, they're so rude. And, and then now I'm doing the same thing. And the reason I'm doing the same thing is because, you know, it's a oh, whole, I need to get well, you know, I need to do some work. Okay. And, and fortunately, you know, that's been the extent of the fallout, but I don't even like that. And, and so, so this is the thing, if we're going to push into this as a church, as the body of Christ, people, individuals, I want to let you know, this is what happens to you. And so if you do not have a process in place where you are, you know, where there's inner healing, where there's Christian counseling, where there's deliverance, where you are not engaging that, okay, and working on your own self, this anointing, I'm telling you, it can make you nuts. You know, it's, the power of it can make you crazy if you're not whole. And so so that's the downside of it. And so if we're going to push into the get push into this together, we simultaneously have to have a plan for, for personal growth and sanctification because you will not get away with it under this anointing. It'll come right to the surface. Okay. All right. So I just want to leave that with you. Um, again, these are my first, uh, first, first takes of languaging this and teaching this because I know that God wants to release us on all of us, not just the few. Okay. All right. God bless you.